am an explorer. Searching for the origins of our universe. And charting a safer path to other worlds. I am a helper. Moving us forward one step at a time. And giving voice to every emotion. I love you. I love you. I am a healer. Modeling the future of medicine. And finding a needle in a haystack. Visionary. Uncovering masterpieces lost to the ages. And finding new adventures in a galaxy far, far away. I am a builder. Driving perfection in everything we create. I am even the narrator of the story you are watching. Of the story you are watching. And the composer of the music. And when the world faces its greatest challenge, Give us the power to take it on together. Well, Jensen, uh, it's, it's a very exciting time. And uh, uh, we saw your uh, opening video of conference you just had uh, this month. And uh, it's amazing, beautiful video. So would you like to talk a, a little bit about your video, your vision, uh, what you think? Yeah, Masa, thanks for, thanks for having me. And it's always, it's always great to sit and talk to you about big ideas. Yes. In fact, in fact, in our in our times together, uh, we've spoken about some very big ideas. One of them, of course, is artificial intelligence, yes. and that is the focus of uh, GTC. GTC is our annual developers conference. GTC is our annual de developers conference. We, you know, the company's the company's founding mission, and its mission today is to solve problems that ordinary computers cannot solve, and so we have to choose and. And we focus on problems like uh, uh, computational medicine or uh, science or uh, robotics or autonomous driving. And of course, uh, very, very broadly, artificial intelligence. And we, we, uh, uh, we uh, focus on uh, developing tools and SDKs and softwares and, uh, of course, new, new chips and new systems that, that can help developers be more productive. And once, uh, once a year, twice a year, actually, uh, we uh, we do our GTC. We used to take it all over the world. I would fly uh, all over the world, starting in Santa Clara, and then I would go to Japan, and I would go to uh, China, I would go to Europe. Uh, but now now I uh, I sit in my in my kitchen, and uh, and I can go I can go all over the world uh, and uh, present to to the developers. Uh, this year we had um, a record number of talks. Uh, we uh, spoke about. Um, uh, some very important areas, and and we have we have. Uh, I, I'd love to explore some of it with you. Uh, one of the one of the major themes uh, is really uh, helping people realize uh, that artificial intelligence 
uh, is the most powerful technology force of our time. And, and when you sit back and think about the reason why, uh, it's because for the very first time, a computer can write software by itself. Software can write software. Yeah, yeah. And because, because, because we know that, that uh, there are many problems we want to solve that we don't know how to solve, and for the very first time, uh, we can build very powerful computers that can write software that humans cannot. Right. And that, that observation, and in fact, you observed it very early as well. Several years ago, you came to talk to me about it. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Several years ago, you came to talk yes, to me about Yes, that. yes, yes, yes. And you observed NVIDIA's, uh, NVIDIA's work in artificial intelligence. And, and we observed that uh, this new type of software uh, is, uh, 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 is written in a very different way. It's created in a very different way not just by software engineers, but together with software engineers. It's created on very powerful computers. Yeah. The, the systems, the computers, the chips, the software inside uh, are completely new. Yeah. And it's a new way of doing computer science. Mm. Yeah. And the new way of doing computer science and new way of, of uh, creating software uh, was, was a, a such a great idea that we we decided to dedicate our whole company to it. That's that's very amazing. You know, writing software is is a very tedious effort, and you do the debugging, and you have to think unlike human. <laughs> but uh, now with uh, uh, you know computer writing the software, we can save a lot of time, and uh, uh, we can focus more on creating something that uh, and then creative thinking so computer can help uh, realize those uh, thinking into actual coding it's amazing it's it helps that's, our creativity so much more that's right and and the the, the, the amazing breakthrough is this you know human creativity of course is, is still unparalleled our, our ability to come up with unique ideas is still unparalleled and machines are nowhere near that right however a computer can solve a problem that is so gigantic in scale that no humans can. That's right. The computer's advantage is scale, yes. size. Yeah. It can look at look at uh, petabytes and petabytes of data yeah. and observe patterns from inside it. And massive parallel effort, right? That's right. In a way that no humans can. Right. Because humans can only fit so much information in our head. And so the advantage of AI is the ability to learn from a gigantic amount of data. The, the algorithm itself is kind of like a universal uh, function approximator. Yes. It can learn almost any function. Yeah. Yeah. And it can learn the function from a great deal of data. And then that function can predict the future in, you know, after it's learned. Right. So it can predict, it can infer uh, from future, uh, future circumstances. And so our, our observation, Masa, the, the, the great, I think the great contribution we've made uh, to the industry is realizing that AI is a brand new type of computer science. The software is different. The system is different. The chips are different. The methodology is different. And you need a computer to create the AI. Right. And you need a computer to run the AI. Right. These two types of computers are fundamentally different than the type of computers today. Right. That observation by our company almost a decade ago was a groundbreaking observation. Yeah. And we put, we've now invested probably $25 billion. Mm. Wow, $25 billion. In investing in this one area of AI. Now, some of the things that, that, that we've been able to solve um, in working with the industry and, and the, the developer conference we have we have uh, some over two billion uh, two million developers around the world now. This last year grew six hundred thousand, so the rate of our developer is growing incredibly. Uh, we have uh, uh, our architecture is called CUDA has been downloaded twenty million times. Twenty million times. Twenty million times in one year. Twenty no twenty million times. This is great. It's been downloaded twenty million times in history. But last year has been downloaded six million times. Oh, like six million times in last one year. Yeah, and twenty million times in history. Yeah, we have sold. We have now shipped one billion GPUs based on CUDA, and now the rate is growing very quickly. 
Uh, we have, uh, we have. Um, so that many developers, that many developers are really, you know, writing calls and so on, right? Yeah, the benefit of a computing platform, the exciting thing about a computing platform is, of course, it's very difficult to build. If you look at the history of computers, really there's only two main computers that's being used today, x86, and of course the most popular CPU in the world is ARM. Yep. The third computing architecture that has, over the history, over this time, the only third version, the only third computer is NVIDIA's CUDA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is a very important point, okay? So as you said, the architecture would change. People, people need to understand about this big change in the concept. Because I say the early stage, the first stage of computing, first it did the calculation. Uh, instead of people do calculation slowly, the computer can do calculation very quickly. And then the second, it, it can memorize so much more information than one human can do. So it can have a massive, massive memory. When you have a massive memory, that you want to search, right? Because there are so many data that you want to search out of those massive memory. So the computer was utilized for those purpose. And then the company who were good at you know, uh, uh, realizing those purpose made a big success. But now, Finally, computer got the ears and the eyes, right? To recognize your, your, your voice and the speech, recognize uh, what you can see with the image uh, recognition, right? So that would totally change, totally change how the computer should be utilized. And uh, you, you are in the center of those, uh, you know, deep learning uh, for learning what, People can see with the eyes and the ears, and which we did not have in the computing world until just recently. Uh, just as calculation, uh, computer did it at scale. Right. Re memorizing, remembering, storing data, computer did it at scale. Yeah. Intelligence, recognizing patterns, reasoning, yeah. planning. Yep. Now the computer is going to do that at scale. Exactly, and the speed. Intelligence at scale. Yeah, yeah. That's the reason why this age of AI is such an important time. Yeah. And during our conversation, you know, you and I have spoken about so many breakthroughs that have come. Computer vision is now, of course, better than humans. Yep. Uh, speech recognition is now better than human. Yep. Uh, even even summarization is better than human. Right. Right. And so, so un language understanding is becoming better than humans. Translation is becoming better than humans. And so the, the ability for uh, this type of software to be able to learn from enormous amounts of data at extremely large scale and speed right. is something that humans cannot keep up with. Right. However, we can take advantage of it to solve some very big problems. So, so some, some uh, people say, well, computer can uh, uh, see and listen, but the computer cannot understand the, the context. Some people say that. I say, why, you know? If human can understand with the logic, if, as long as there is a logic, of course computer should be able to understand the context because it, it's a bunch of, uh, come with a bunch of logic, right? Yeah, one of the things one of the things that people will say, of course, is that the computer cannot think. The concept of thinking is is very uh, difficult to describe. What is thinking is very difficult to describe. Just like just like an airplane doesn't fly like a bird, right? The computer can perform skills that is apparently like thinking. Right. It doesn't have to think the way we think. The computer performs a skill that seemingly is intelligent. That's right. It seems like intelligent. Right. The advantage, of course, is that artificial intelligence can do it 24 hours a day. It could do it at incredible high speeds. Uh, you could replicate it and um, uh, do it at very large scale. You could rec recognize patterns uh, that no humans can because there's too much information. For example, uh, one, of the, one of the major applications for, uh, for um, uh, 
uh, AI right now uh, is, uh, is um, uh, cybercrime fraud detection. So much of our commerce is moving into the cloud, into digital. Cybercrime is very, very large. The, the world's economy is $140 trillion. About 1% of it, about $1 trillion is lost as a result of, of uh, cybercrime. We can now use artificial intelligence to recognize patterns of intrusion from uh, many, many different sources and shut down the intrusion instantaneously. So American Express recently announced uh, that they're using NVIDIA to do uh, fraud detection, and they can detect fraud in two milliseconds. Right. It's two milliseconds, and so they can shut that down. Uh, the savings to the global economy, of course, is very high. Uh, you could, you could, um, uh, you know that that there's a fair amount of loss um, in shopping and retail, and uh, the checkout process is very arduous and uh, inaccurate, and um, uh, the, the retail industry uh, loses about 1.5 percent per year. Yeah. If you think about the size of the retail industry, 1.5 percent per year, and their gross profit, their their gross profit is only two percent. Right. Right. Yeah. So. One and a half percent is lost. So bad, bad inventory, right? So that you have to throw away the waste, the, the product that you oversupply. And people have been thinking, what is the best volume should I, should I procure? Uh, how much volume can we sell this Christmas? Uh, people have been thinking, and that is the thinking people thought oh, I am expert, I, I am most good at the average other people on the street. But as you say, you know, computer can think what is the best mix, what is the best volume that we should uh, prepare as the uh, storage for the inventory so that we don't waste, right? So this is a part of thinking uh, that computer can become expert and with a massive data of the seasonality, the temperature, weather, and the uh, employment rate, the pandemic, all those input of data, uh, you know, we, the computer can actually think what is the best mix of product and the volume, what is the best price that should we price to win against the competition, what is the best recommendation should we give to the each individual customer based on their uh, hobby and their buying uh, pattern and the habit and uh, their budget uh, and, and so on, right? That's exactly right. And so if you look at Walmart, we work with Walmart on their inventory management system and their retail checkout system and their, their warehouse logistics system. The, they have so many stores. They have hundreds of thousands of SKUs and every retail store is different because every retail store is in a different region and each region has its regional taste. Sometimes there's a, uh, there's a, uh, maybe sometimes there's a, there's a hurricane and all of a sudden they need special type of things. Uh, maybe sometimes uh, there's a picnic, just a picnic or a big game. All of a sudden uh, beer runs out or certain, certain types of uh, foods run out. Uh, you see that each one of the regions and each one of the stores are behaving differently. It's impossible for somebody to sit at headquarters to collect the information, reason about what to do, plan the inventory, ship it to the stores. In the future, Walmart is going to be one giant AI. Right. Yes. Yes. One giant AI. And that's the exciting part, the, the exciting time right now. I believe that every company will become an AI. Yeah, yeah. Banking is a great example also, right? You know, it, banking become a giant AI center, which uh, just happen to manage people's wealth, right? That's right. And of course, we will always have human in the loop. Yep. We will have human in the loop. It will make recommendations about, it will make recommendations about the action it's about to take. Right. And we will apply our judgment. Yep. And we can think about it. And we can, of course, apply core values or maybe, maybe, uh, even though we are going to lose money, uh, we believe that it's good for society right now to help uh, uh, people through the pandemic. And we don't change the price, even though the AI thinks that we should change the price. Yeah, because we, we, uh, we have a heart. We have a heart to be nice to the other human, to 
to be helpful to the other human. So we use, utilize AI as a tool for our judgment, for our decision making, and uh, for our happiness and the, or you know joy, whatever. Uh, human, we we choose uh, which recommendation to take, and sometimes go against the recommendation because of the other reason that uh, we want to have as a taste. We're seeing now now the. Um you know, of course, initially, AI started in the clouds because they collected so much data. And the, the amount of data in the, in the world today on the Internet, you have 6 billion people using the Internet. And uh, the amount of data is so gigantic, it is impossible to even search anymore. Right. How do we know what to look for? Right. There's, so much, there's so much items, there's so many things in the world that there's no way to look for it. We can't look for news. It's impossible. News is coming all the time. Yeah. Music is coming all the time. Video is coming all the time. Everything is coming all the time. And so the internet, of course, had to move from search to recommendation. Yeah. The recommendation engine of all of the internet companies is what drove AI in the first generation. Yeah. Yeah. So the first, the, first, the first generation of AI, when you and I first started to talk about AI, AI was being developed in the laboratories. We were developing the computing system. And we were creating the software stack and the methodologies for creating AI. The, phase, the, the first industrial phase, the industrialization of the technology was in the cloud. What's happening now, and this is the exciting part, the next phase of AI is now moving into all the industries. Yeah. Uh, we're working with AstraZeneca and GSK. This is the announcement that I made in Cambridge. The reason why I called it Cambridge One is because, because uh, as you know, Cambridge is the home of computer science, the birthplace of computer science, Alan Turing, and the birthplace of genomics, Watson and Crick's, the discovery of the DNA. Can you imagine when I built a machine for computational genomics to place it in the home of my future, my future home, Cambridge. Yeah. Pretty amazing. It's such a, a wonderful story. Yeah. So the timing was perfect. I called it Cambridge One. Uh, we announced our partnership with GSK and AstraZeneca to do use AI for drug discovery. So now AI has gone into industry for drug discovery. Uh, AI went into retail, Walmart, for example. AI went into banking, uh, 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 American Express, for example. Uh, we just announced uh, AI for Microsoft Office. We worked with uh, Satya and his team to connect Azure with NVIDIA AI to Microsoft Office. And you could imagine all of the ways that AI can help us uh, summarize our emails in the morning, maybe prioritize our work, yeah. identify, identify very urgent matters, yeah. uh, recommend the next action. When we type email, of course, the grammar will be always very good. Uh, of course, uh, there are many things that we can do with AI. And so now it's in office. Uh, we have uh, AI in agriculture with John Deere uh, in, um, uh, in, uh, in um, uh, robotics uh, in Japan with Fanuc, yeah, yeah. Uh, with uh, farming with Kubota, Kubota, uh, Kubota Industries. Yeah. Um, you have um, uh, AI in, uh, uh, in uh, of course, transportation. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the list of industries now that AI is going into is really quite phenomenal. And so the, I, would, I would say that, that the second generation of AI is enterprise, yeah. turning every company into an AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The third generation, and this is, this is where you and I uh, uh, fantasized and, and talked about uh, the future of, of AI. The largest opportunity, of course, is when AI moves out to the world. And AI is now autonomous machines. Yeah. Uh, uh, everything will be a robot. Uh, buildings will be a robot. Uh, cars will be a robot. There will be two-wheel robots, two-leg robots, two-arm robots. Uh, the future, your future uh, um, uh, artificial leg to help people walk is a robot. Yeah. Your future, right? Your future wheelchair will be a robot. Well, I, I, I think the biggest robot is the uh, autonomous car. Uh, so it's it's a gigantic uh, gigantic industry, and uh, so people still doubt. Some there are some so many people still doubt 
can autonomous uh, driving uh, would be uh, safer or as as safe as human drivers okay uh, you and i are a true believer of the autonomous driving but uh, uh, let let the audience know that where are we in the autonomous driving stage and 5 years and then 10 years where uh, what's the level of autonomous driving uh, you know the capability and safety ness uh, can you comment on that uh, there are I, I would break autonomous driving into three large categories okay. the first category is autonomous vehicles that is not moving people in closed environments or even in open environments but moving slowly for example delivery grocery there's nobody inside just the uh, lettuce and milk and eggs and it's not very it's a very slow moving car maybe only moving at 5 10 15 miles per hour and uh, no harm will come no harm will come that will be completely autonomous yeah uh, even even inside the logistic center the warehouse exactly. right it's, there will be hundreds of millions of that just without even thinking about humans there will be hundreds of millions of that per year. Yeah. Second, uh, inside inside heavily mapped areas, regions that are very well understood, there will be taxi services that are essentially driving on a invisible rail. It's almost like a rail tram, except it's based on AI. Right. And of course, it's much more advanced than a tram. But it's driving on digital rails, digital maps. Very still, very complicated. But you can imagine the technology is possible. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, Google just announced, right? Waymo just announced that Arizona, their cars are now completely driverless. Yeah. So it has begun. Mm -hmm. The thing about engineering, as you know, is is very well is the moment that someone achieves it. The fact that it's possible, everyone will, everyone else will achieve it. Yeah. The art of the possible is the first thing for innovation. Now that somebody does it, it will become better, lower cost, higher quality, longer range, incredibly fast. Yeah. That's the nature of competition. That's the nature of engineering. So people, people still ask question about what happens if the dog run on, on the street, the birds comes and the heavy rain and the snow, all those long tail, uh, very rare case, can uh, autonomous driving be safe enough uh, compared to the human drivers? It will be safer than a human driver. I absolutely agree with you, but there are many other people who don't believe that yet. Uh, yeah, we have, to, we have to show it and prove it, but, but there's no question it will be safer. So, and the third category is passenger cars, right? right? The third category is passenger cars. The thing about passenger cars is that it doesn't have to be completely autonomous. It just has to make the driving experience much more delightful. In the future, when you have a self-driving car and it's a passenger, you're driving the car. It's almost like you're driving with your brain power. Your hand is on the steering wheel. You're paying attention. It's almost like you're thinking and the car is connected to your brain yeah that is going to be really a wonderful experience and so the autonomy there is driving assistance to the end degree but it's driving assistance very very advanced driving assistance and and of course uh, you could tell the car to go park itself you know it's only two or three miles per hour it will recognize the parking spots it will recognize the electrical park itself you it will you can summon the car um, when you're in a in a traffic jam, of course, it will drive by itself, and you can even take a nap if you like. And so, so there's a lot of different uh, uh, degrees of autonomy. I think that when people uh, take take uh, uh, automobiles and they say that you need to build a self-driving car that can drive in any condition, in any country, on any road, just like a human, that's unnecessary to achieve to bring great joy to people, right? Well, I. I I th I think sometime in the in the future, 
the regular human driver's car will be limited into the, some hobby area. Like we used to have horse riding on, on the street, right? But now horse riding is limited to some hobby area, right? The, if, you, if you ride a horse on the highway, you, you will be caught by the police and because it will, it will jam and, and uh, create a, um, you know, noise to the traffic system. But yeah, uh, right. uh, uh, because the speed speed of the car is so much faster than the horses and uh, uh, so on, I think the, in the future, autonomous driving become the center of the uh, transportation. And human can, of course, uh, have a hobby of driving. Uh, but for the fast lane, you know, uh, uh, things, uh, autonomous will be safer. That's definitely, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. So we're, we're working on autonomous machines now uh, of all kinds. There, there, there's, there's ones that swim. Of course, all boats and all ships will be autonomous. Uh, flying. Um, flying, autonomous. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we're working on so many autonomous machines. The, the ones that gives me the most joy are the ones that are extensions of your body, you know, for to help people who, who need prosthetics. Yeah. There's some 30, 40 million people around the world that needs prosthetics. Yeah. And so now we could give them robotic legs. Yeah. You know? And so I think the, the robotic technology there is going to help a great deal of people. And you're going to have uh, robotic wheelchairs and just more robotic uh, street seat sweepers and all over the place. So that that's all edge AI. Right? So the, the AI have to be smart enough in the edge side that is uh, uh, with a high speed. But also you have the uh, massive parallel, uh, the AI in the crowd. And uh, the massive parallel AI in the crowd and edge AI shake hand with the fast communication uh, with, with 5G coming now and 6G, 7G, 8G coming uh, in the future, that exactly. uh, with a seamless interaction of edge side AI and the cloud side AI, right? That's exactly right. The cloud side AI will be used uh, for creating the AI, yeah. for training the AI. Yes. Then, the, then the, the AI will be run at the edge on these autonomous machines, edge AI. Right. Sometimes the edge AI is moving. Sometimes the edge AI is not moving. It's just a building or a street or a warehouse or, yeah. or a, a factory. Uh, it's not moving. And um, uh, and they're all edge AIs. And and these edge AIs will operate the AI and they will learn because some, some skills, it's not perfected. And sometimes they make a mistake. We will, they will remember their mistake, send it back to the cloud. The cloud will learn from that mistake, send back the, the learning to all of the autonomous machines, and everybody becomes smarter at once. Yes. This learning loop, this perpetual learning machine, will learn so fast. Yeah. Once it's deployed, it will learn so fast. Yeah, so, so the, the, the cloud side is the... Uh, aggregation of all the intelligence from the edge AI, right? So it's it's a group thinking. It's like a group thinking. And, exactly. Uh, it, it becomes smarter and smarter and find out all the exceptional cases stored and, and you know, think together, right? So that each individual edge side can also uh, uh, be a, a input to the crowd, you know, thinking, uh, but also execution side uh, on the on the edge side, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And so, so today, today the the uh, the world from a computer architecture perspective, computer systems perspective, uh, the cloud and the the AI is x86 and NVIDIA, and in the in the edge, it's ARM. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reason why combining ARM and NVIDIA makes so much sense because we can then bring NVIDIA's AI. Yeah. 
to the most popular C edge CPU in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the be beauty beauty of ARM is the distribution power of the to the many many partners, right? right. So some people are uh, wondering, uh, you know, that uh, ARM has been neutral to provide the uh, uh, IP to many chipset vendors, and some people argue that after uh, you acquire ARM from us and become one company. Uh, would uh, those uh, partners who have been getting a license from ARM IP, for ARM IP, do they, can they continue to get license so that they can also deploy for many different applications, create many different chipset uh, system on chip? Uh, would you allow them to uh, continue that? Absolutely. And in fact, the ecosystem, the network, this distribution power that you said is the most valuable part of ARM. Yeah. The CPU was the original. Of course, the CPU is fantastic, energy efficient. Yeah. It's improving all the time. Incredible computer scientists building the best CPU in the world. Yeah. And it's designed for these edge, energy efficient, and yet very high performance. Yeah. But the, the true value of ARM is the ecosystem of ARM, the 500 companies yeah. that use ARM today. Yeah, we did a calculation. The uh, ARM would uh, ship out uh, a trillion chipset, trillion chipset in a short while, right? So it is the, uh, the edge computing side with your partner as a new owner, uh, we, we can provide to the edge computing and that become uh, upgrade to the edge AI for That's the right. for the trillion chipset that That's would be amazing amazing combination our, our dream our dream is to bring Nvidia AI to arms ecosystem right the only way to bring it to the ecosystem is through all of the existing customers licensees and partners exactly so we would we would like to offer the licensees more, exactly. even more. And so, of course, we will honor them with everything that they currently buy. We'd like them to buy even more. Yeah. And so, so, we, so there's a business reason, of course, but the vision is to bring, to combine the, the most popular CPU in the world that is in every single edge device on the planet. And it's, it's diversifying into so many different types of systems, whether it's cars or, or like delivery drones or uh, uh, cell towers and uh, right, all kinds of systems all over the world. We would like to bring the idea. Yeah. We we provide a tool set to those enabler, right? That uh, that create a new uh, SOCs for every different application that they they would like to create. So we just provide a tool set that they can utilize more tools toolbox to uh, utilize all kinds of available uh, you know, integration and technology, but they can create for each specific game machines, the home appliance, the robotics that flies or run or swim, whatever, right? So uh, they, can, they can have all kinds of creativity for different applications, but the edge AI can also communicate with uh, your cloud AI so that each of them become smarter again, right? That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And so once once the world realized what our vision was, they realized that, oh, okay, that makes sense. And in fact, we're going to offer them NVIDIA's unique AI technology and all of our expertise. If they have the expertise, that's fantastic. But if they don't, they can benefit from ours. And so together we can bring the next era of AI uh, and realize that. Now, this next generation, as you know, is the next internet is so much larger. Today's internet, today's internet is used by several billion people. We use the internet, we, we touch the internet probably several hundred times a day. So the internet is processing several trillion AI inferences per day. Yeah. However, some day, now the limitation of the current internet, of course, is it takes a long time to 
create a human, even though population is quite large, it still takes a long time to create a human. Nine months to give birth, and then they have to become adults. It takes a long time. The, the biological time frame for intelligence to use the internet is very long. However, in the future, the intelligence that we can create based on AI and systems and machines, you can create them as quickly as you can manufacture them. With a trillion chipset that they would autonomously think and provide the information and communicate by themselves, right? That's right. And they will be, and because these are machines, they never get tired. Right. And because they're working in the world, in the physical world where something is happening all the time, they will be connected, they will be chirping and talking to the internet continuously. Yeah. So instead of billions of people, there will be trillions of autonomous machines. Instead of several hundred times a day, it will be continuously talking to the internet. Yeah. The point is, the next internet is many orders of magnitude bigger than this one. Totally agree, totally agree. It's a full of opportunity and full of excitement and full of solutions that mankind could not sol solve in the past. Like this, this time in the world, we are all suffering from pandemic, but you know, it is amazing that AI is now solving uh, the, uh, the this drug discovery, you know, the anti uh, antibodies, the vaccines that human could not uh, create uh, quick enough. AI is helping. That's AI is exactly, helping creating exactly. solutions, right? For the vaccine and uh, uh, all those uh, antibodies. Uh, we could not solve th this quickly without the help of AI. That's exactly right. And, and you know, if you, look at, if you look at our previous threats in humanity, it's in the old days, oftentimes it's war. And so the defense systems that we create are based on detection of those things, you know, enemies, aircraft, radar systems, enemy submarines, missiles, and things like that. Now, of course, those threats still exist. But the future threats are likely biological, right. and we now see it. Right. And these biological threats are invisible. And so the only way that we're going to be able to solve it and prevent it from its spread, detect it early, shut it down quickly, find a therapy, find a vaccine quickly, the only way to do that at light speed is with artificial intelligence. Exactly. Yeah. So now yeah. nations, nations after nations are building up defense systems for the future. One of our family company now has developed AI system uh, that can detect heart attack uh, 14 days before you have heart attack, right? With a 95% accuracy. Yeah. So people would no longer die from heart attack, right? The, one of the biggest cause of death in the United States and many other countries now became heart attack, right? And, but if you can detect a heart attack 14 days before you have actual heart attack, you can prepare, you can go to the do see the doctor, you don't, you don't do uh, 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 you know, too much uh, you know, uh, uh, heavy exercise, uh, right? And uh, you start be careful, careful not to have you know, a sudden heart attack is amazing. You will be saved, right? That's right. And uh, uh, for the cancer, uh, people would no longer die from cancer very soon, right? All kinds of uh, uh, drug discovery is being done with a power of AI, and people will no longer die from car accident, right? So there are many reasons, cause of death of human, uh, which we could not solve in the past, but. Uh, with the help of uh, AI, now many, one by one, those causes of death is being you know, eliminated or reduced uh, dramatically. So uh, unless we have the natural disaster, uh, like a big earthquake or tsunami, right? Uh, the hurricane, uh, and this kind of pandemic that we did not know as a new virus. Uh, but uh, I think with the power of AI, 
those unsolvable uh, uh, issues, disasters that humans were facing could be helped dramatically, right? So some people say, AI, oh, that's the enemy of mankind. No, I said, no, no, no. <laughs> it is a big help to the uh, disaster or issues, the uh, unproductivity that mankind used to have, the headache we used to have. So we should be having a big smile and big excitement uh, uh, welcoming this uh, uh, revolution of AI, right? There's so many, there's so many, uh, of course, with every powerful technology, and this is, this is, this is, I quit, you, you know, Masa, you, 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 I don't know if the audience knows this, but I'm going to say it, okay? You're the only person that I know, you're the only person that I know who was at the beginning and recognized every single computer revolution since the PC revolution. You brought the PC revolution to Japan. Uh, you brought the internet revolution to Japan. You brought the mobile revolution to Japan. You were the first to recognize the China internet revolution. And you were early in recognizing the AI revolution. Uh, you, 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 uh, you're the only person that I know that has, that has, that has recognized it, benefited from it, every one of these regular every one of these revolutions. And so you, you, you have to... You are too nice to say that. Uh, I, I'm flattered, but I am still a little guy. <laughs> still having, you know... Uh, well, you're, you're just modest, but I, I just wanted to, to say that. The, 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 um, uh, you, you, know, you know well that in all of the times that we've been in the computer industry, uh, this is the most powerful technology force that we have ever seen. I mean, the ability... For, for computers to write software, there are several characteristics, several fact, several impacts that I think is is um, uh, that that I would love society to recognize. One, uh, today the most valuable skill, the most valuable skill, frankly, is computer science and computer programming. If you were a computer scientist, if you were a computer programmer, uh, it is very likely you have quite a nice career. It is very likely if you're a software programmer. You're doing very well, and you're benefiting from this industrial revolution. However, if you're not a software programmer, it is more likely that you're being left behind. Programming a computer is not easy. And for a long time, we thought that the right answer for the industry was to teach everyone how to program a computer. But that's not likely. C++ is hard. It doesn't matter. It, it's just hard. And the likelihood that the world all can program computers is not likely. However, for the very first time, we have advanced computer science so much that the computer can program itself. That's the amazing part. You just have to teach it. The thing that I'm excited about is that we have finally democratized computing. Yeah. Until now, we benefited from computing. The people in the computer science industry, the people in tech have benefited from the computer industry for the first time. We're going to democratize software programming. It no longer, you don't have to program the computer. You just have to teach the computer. Yeah. And, and you just ask, you, you, you just ask, you just ask to the computer, this is what I want to do. Uh, can you give me solution? You know, this is what we, I think uh, where we should go. This is what I wish to have, right? Then the computer give us the solutions and provide provide the, the, the tools to make it happen, right? That's right. 0.5% of the Earth population are in high tech and knows how to program a computer. But 99% of the people know how to teach something. Teach somebody a skill. A lot of people can teach someone a skill. Now you can teach a computer a skill and that computer can replicate it and automate it for you. We have now democratized technology. I think that 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 realization, that realization, and the realization that that AI is ultimately about software writing software, and it's automating skills. It's automating skills. What are the skills that we can use to automate? And and that observation 
uh, by the various industries, one after another after another, I think it's going to revolutionize, revolutionize the economy. Yeah. So the, the computer, the AI, become our assistant, right? And then uh, next stage, it become our partner, right? And then it becomes our mentor, right? Uh, in some uh, uh, area, but still we can we can interact with them. And the most important thing for the success of uh, each individual human in the future, I think, is to have a big dream, big wish, right? Then uh, uh, you can realize using a bunch of those assistants or partners that uh, uh, we can realize. So having a strong wish, right? Uh, I want, I wish to do this, I wish to do that, right? There, if there are so issues, the problem, people are suffering, then you have a wish to help those people who are suffering, right? Then you have a strong wish and then you can utilize a bunch of assistants or companions uh, as the AI helping you to achieve the wish. So I think, I think the, the, the key in the future to the success for us is to have a strong wish, strong dream, and uh, uh, creativity that we would like to provide. Uh, that, that is a, become a key. You have, you have described uh, the singular characteristic of many entrepreneurs, right? They have big dream, big wish, unreasonable expectation. Right. Yeah, push the limit, right? Push the limit. And, and somehow, somehow, uh, somehow that, that vision is realized uh, through, of course, hard work and persistence, uh, surrounded by a lot of amazing people. In the future, those big dreams will still require amazing people, but it will also be supported by a bunch of AIs to help that realize that dream. There's no question. You know, one of the things that I'm very excited about, I'm excited about, about, about um, uh, the reason why I'm so, so, that I believe that this is the, the time of AI for Japan. I believe deeply that. Yes. And let me, let me tell you why. Japan's industry is not focused on the internet. It's not focused on computer science. Japan's industry, precision engineering, precision machinery, there's large industries in Japan. Those large industries haven't been able to benefit from computer science until now. The automation of those machinery, the automation of robotics, the automation of factories, you know, these precision instruments, precision machines, that the area where Japan just does incredibly well, world class at, that area is now ready for AI. And, and here's, here's what I imagine. I imagine that we go into a virtual reality world, yeah. and I, pres I I demonstrated this. I demonstrated this at, at uh, my conference, as you can see. It's called Omniverse. Omniverse, this alternative universe, yeah. is photorealistic. It obeys the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. If I drop something, it falls to the ground. It looks like re reality, and it's infused with a bunch of AIs. Mm -hmm. You will create a factory first. And this factory will be filled with robots. Those robots you will teach, you will train, you will program these robots. And these robots will learn how to manufacture products. That product will be uh, maybe a vacuum cleaner. It's a robot. It's a self-driving car. It's a robot. It's a logistics mover. It's a robot. Ro this robotic factory will be filled with robots that will build robots in virtual reality. The whole thing will be simulated and you will you will see at night when you go to bed, the AIs will optimize, optimize the manufacturing process. Yeah. Tomorrow when you come back, the organization of the factory may be different than when you went to bed. Right. But it is more optimal than when you saw it yesterday. It will evolve every day. <laughs> That's right. The AIs are, are evolving the factory. And when it gets to a good point, you will download the blueprint. And we will make it in our universe. Yeah. Now we have two copies of the factory. One in the physical reality, mm -hmm. one in the virtual reality. Right. They will now be digital twins. Right. Yeah. Every optimization you make here, if you want to improve here, 
you optimize it here, you simulate it here, and then you can change it in the physical world. Yeah. That future of ro virtual reality and, vir and robotic factories with robots that are building robots, I believe that is going to change everything. Yeah, that, that is the concept of metaverse, right? The concept of metaverse. Yeah, yeah. And it's right in front of us now. Yeah. It is yeah, as you say, Japanese has a, a great, uh, uh, you know, the horizon and the depths of uh, mechatronics, right? Uh, yes. Mecha and electronics. Now we need to have artificial intelligence uh, integrated so that it become a, a very smart robots, uh, you know, where, where many other countries don't have enough the ways or depths uh, to make this happen. So we have to give the tools of artificial intelligence to those people who have passion to those uh, uh, world. Uh, I think that that is very, very important. So yes. you remember, um, you know, four years ago, you and I sitting uh, in the garden of my home Right, we yes. spent we spent uh, we spent three four hours just you and me alone uh, in the garden having dinner uh, with a, a glass of wine. We were talking, we, we were talking about uh, our memory of Steve Jobs. Right, uh, how crazy he was, how smart, how genius he was, and how enjoy how much joy we had uh, with with him. Right. Uh, independently, but we, we had a common view of him. Uh, but with his one, uh, uh, you know, art, which is the iPhone, changed the lifestyle of humanity, right? So that is the last 10 years. I think the next 10 years, you are the one, Jensen. You know, this is the reason why we are having a fireside chat, right? that you are in the center of the AI computing. In the era of AI computing, you provide all the tools and the intelligence that everybody uh, want to utilize, have to utilize as a new industry, new science, new education, new communication. I, I, I think the very exciting next 10 years is coming ahead of us. Unbelievable, actually, unbelievable. You know, the we've been we've been both of us have been in the computer industry a very long time, but it has never been this exciting, and the future has never been so clearly going to be so significant, the impact so significant, and and I I think that that um, uh, the part that is is almost unimaginable is that we can almost touch it that the, 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 the AI that we've always imagined, we're now seeing it in action. It is working yeah. in front of us, doing amazing things. And, you know, Masa, what, NVIDIA has AI researchers now everywhere, AI engineers everywhere. And every single day, something unbelievable is happening. Yeah. Not, just, not just impressive, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Let me give you an example. So I was, tell, I was telling, I was telling um, uh, Eric, Eric Wren, we were just talking, and, and uh, you know that video conferencing is going to be one of the killer apps of, yeah. of, this, yeah. of the next several years. And uh, it's going to consume live video, consumer video is going to consume uh, the vast majority of the world's internet traffic. Yeah. And, and communicating uh, using the traditional method of video uh, is very cumbersome. Uh, eye contact is un very difficult to make. Right. However, Instead of transmitting video, we, sh we showed at GTC this brand new AI. It's transmitting perception. So I perceive you. On my side, I reconstruct you. Yeah. And when I reconstruct you, you're looking at my eyes. And if we're having a video conference with 20 other people, when you are reconstructed for every one of them. You're looking at everybody's eyes. Yeah. Yeah. It's really unbelievable. And because it's reconstructed, 
using AI, reconstructing it in its mind, the amount of bandwidth we can use, you can keep reducing the bandwidth, keep reducing the bandwidth by a factor of 10. Yeah. And the AI can still reconstruct. Yeah, it. you just input the movement of the parts, right? And then reconstruct. Because the AI remembered what you look like. Yeah. yeah. For example, if I close my eyes, I can still have a conversation. With you. I still know you're sitting in front of me. Right. I remember that you're sitting in front of me. So the AI remembered you yeah. because it, you know, recognized a few images. And then after that, it only perceived you and reconstruct on my side. Yeah. Uh, I also showed him natural language understanding and uh, speech translation in real time. So you could speak to me in the future in Japanese. I could speak to you in English. You hear Japanese. I hear English. Yeah. 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 Now the world can speak, can communicate through video conference in a way that it cannot be. Jensen, it's, it's, it's such an exciting next 10 years uh, world. Uh, I really thank you. I, 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 I want to speak with you next uh, 48 hours uh, on and on, but uh, we have we have a, a, a limited time. So uh, I'd like to close uh, this today's chat. Thank but, you. But but I will remember my life that you know you and I sit down together in my garden last time. You know, uh, uh, and that was a very exciting uh, moment. Today's chat with you. Again, so many uh, thousands of miles far away, but we are, we are, we are talking like in front of each other, right? And, uh, it's really true. And uh, uh, with the uh, help of AI, we can help many, many other people's life. And uh, not just for the people, but for all the animals and the living being on the earth. Uh, it's it's exciting world. Uh, that we're gonna we're gonna see. Masa, thank you very much, and and uh, you, you remember very well that four years ago, uh, we were talking about many things that that what is happening now. Yeah. Many of the things that's happening now, we were talking about four years ago, and and you were talking to me about my dreams for the company, and you were talking about your dreams for the future of AI, and and I want to thank you for for uh, uh, entrusting me with Arn. Uh, this is this is really one of the world's great jewels. It's a treasure, and and when you bought it, it was a treasure. And uh, I I I really I really uh, am honored and, and appreciate that uh, you're entrusting with it. Uh, when you called me, when you called me, I told you I was going to be the last and highest bidder, and uh, I was because I wanted it so badly. And and um, uh, this is this was a it's a uh, you know, I had to pay you an arm and a leg for it, uh, but but uh, uh, but it's going to be worth uh, way more than that. And and the, the company that we're going to build, uh, combining the most popular CPU in the world, uh, the AI computing company in the world, we will build the company for the age of AI. And this this is just an exciting thing. At at the time four years ago when we were having dinner, uh, that was exactly the timing. I, w I was deciding to acquire AMP, and that is exactly the timing that I thought the combination of ARM and NVIDIA with some kind of uh, collaboration, right? That we talked about many ideas and will create new age of computing, right? Uh, as a platform. And I'm, I'm so excited and happy that, you know, that what we were discussing uh, is becoming true. We're going to make it so. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good soft thing. Yeah. Thank Have you. Have a good soft thing, world. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.